Can I tell you a secret? My biggest fear is waking up at the end of my life and realizing that I never really lived. I wake up and then check my phone, brush my teeth, and I check my phone again while I consume as much caffeine as humanly possible. I rush to work where I spend the whole day stressed to hit deadlines. And when I finally finish work, I zone out to Netflix to help me relax. And then I go to sleep and do it all over again the next day. After realizing I'm running myself in circles, I can't help to wonder who are the people I know that broke free from this vicious cycle. And how in the world did they get there? Then I got a call. Hello? Hey, do you want to come to the cabin? Bingo. Jasmine and Crystal are a perfect example of breaking away from the mold of conventional living. After years living in a sprinter van, they moved into the middle of nowhere to build their dream home and chase a more simple life. I feel like I've been on autopilot for 30 years. And recently, I've been trying to do something about it. I'm sure we're not the only ones that ask ourselves, what do we want our lives to look like? I feel like I've been rushing through life. Most of my weeks, my butt is glued to a computer chair working at a desk. But what am I working towards? Is there something that I'm missing? This has been a conversation for Paige and I recently. For me, it was always the expectation of what I should do. You know, I went to school, I got my master's, I got the dream job, but it always left me questioning whether it was what I wanted to do or what I felt was expected of me to do. It's time for us to make sense of it all. But first, we have a plane to catch. no idea where we are. It's been windy roads and just trees the whole time. Welcome to the woods. Oh my goodness. We're here. Release the hounds. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! Yes, you remember? How do you feel? Excited. It's really great to be here. This is where you're sleeping. And there's no heat. Again. And this is where you poop. Yay. Okay. And this? This, everywhere, here, everywhere, this is where you pee. Hot water, cold water, also the shower. I'm gonna be honest. I think I underestimated what this off-grid living thing is all about. Morning. It's really cold. It's really cold. We actually here. had to not sleep in the cabin because it was so cold and the girls were nice enough to let us sleep in the van, which has a working heater. Thank God. But it's wild to think about how even a year off grid um, working on this property and how far they've come and they still don't have their electrical system in place. Um, they're still running off portable like solar power batteries and they're, they're still rough in it even after a year. And luckily, or maybe not, we get to experience what off grid cabin life it's really about. The want to be alone in the woods made us come to the cabin. The want to just be totally out there, totally remote, so much privacy, surrounded by trees, to be off grid, to be able to sustain ourselves and create a homestead. That was that. Jasmine and Crystal live what many would deem an unconventional life. Without many of the amenities we take for granted, like heat, running drinking water, in a constant supply of power. I think some of the biggest challenges is managing consumption, like anything to do with water or electricity. Like it's something that we wake up, we open our eyes and we think about every single day. I'm gonna put this down and then you'll pull the generator for the first time. So if you don't know, they have no power. They're living completely off grid while they build their solar array. So this is a daily routine to make sure that they're powered throughout the day. It's honestly wild to me that you guys have to do this every morning. Like stuff we take for granted. So this, the idea of the generator, it's short term, it's temporary. One day we will be harnessing the sun's energy. We won't need this so much. Today's not that day. Most of us don't have to think about our consumption. We just have endless power at our, basically our fingertips. These girls have to think about this every single day. And how much power are they consuming? 
have to use these alternative modes of getting energy just to get by with their basic needs. I feel that my biggest challenge living off grid would be being so isolated away from family and friends because they are 18 hours away. <laughs> Most of them, you're gonna make me cry on the first question. One of the biggest challenges is water, drinking water. We are currently driving to a spring. So we've been living at the cabin for about a year and about every two weeks we stop on our way to town when we're getting supplies to get fresh drinking water right from the earth. We don't have an indoor shower, we don't have an indoor sink. So all of those luxuries we're missing and it it can take a toll. We are getting used to it and we um, we adapt well, but it still gets to us. <laughs> I think the human connection is something that I miss a lot. Good start, good start, Colin. <laughs> it's just something that I definitely struggle with because I'm super close to my family. Living off grid is hard. You might be asking yourself, why would these girls intend to live a life with so many damn challenges? Well, it seems to me that they embrace the discomfort and that's where they find the most personal growth. It takes me out of my comfort zone. It takes us out of our comfort zone, being here. You know, being far from friends and family and taking on a project of this size and wanting to make it a home out here. <laughs> far from amenities and everything that's familiar, really. Being uncomfortable is where we find the most growth, for sure. And I, that's been a trend all throughout my life. Any project that begins that has hope or heart always becomes successful and you always learn something along the way. Even if you don't get it the first time and you fail, you've still like, you've still learned a valuable lesson. I think we see people living extraordinary lives and we think, how could I ever have that? And maybe they just got lucky. But I actually think we tend to stay where we are because it's safer to stay than it is to change. It's safer where it's familiar and known, even if that familiar is not what we want. It's very empowering when we get through it. Yeah, now that it's been an entire year off grid, the skills we've gathered and like the things we've learned have just been unbelievable, really. Like I don't, I can't believe I know how to work a chainsaw and run an excavator and all within a year, you know? Being able to show everyone that watches the videos that maybe they could do something if we try, I think it leaves them with a lot of hope. It's been a lot in like one year. It's really beautiful though. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it here. I gotta stop crying, Colin. <laughs> Honestly, I'm starting to think that I've been paralyzed by comfort. If I go in a specific direction, that it might not work and it might be uncomfortable and I might fail. I might face fear or judgment or even criticism. And look, I get it, stepping into a brand new path is difficult, but often not more difficult than remaining in a situation that you hate. So for the rest of the week, I'm going to try to embrace all of the discomforts that off-grid living has to offer. Who would like a tea? Aye, uh, yes please. We don't have cups. Gotta do some dishes. So, you don't have any water in the cabin, so where do you even do your dishes? In the van. It's wild to think about. The girls don't even have any running water in the cabin. So no matter what, no matter the weather, they gotta do it in the van. Van's small. It is small. Time for tea. Gotta warm up our hands. There's no hot water in the van, so it gets extra cold at this time of year. The unfortunate part of not having a toilet in your house is rain or shine, whether it's snowing or it's sleeting, you have to walk to the outhouse outside. I am pooping with the door open, looking at nature. Imagine what life would be like in the middle of winter in a Canadian winter, let's say minus 30 in snow, and you don't have an indoor flushing toilet. Be pretty uncomfortable. One of the joys of off-grid living is freezing cold showers outside. It's time to shower. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you not gonna wash your hair? <laughs> all right, okay, all right, all right, all right. How was that? Fun. 
<laughs> All for a living, eh? <laughs> Can't even brush your teeth inside. <laughs> the discomforts here are a plenty. But what does this all mean? And how does it help me live a more intentional life? So I think intentional living can look different for a lot of people, as we're all different human beings. I just want to live every day as the best human I possibly can with being as close and connected to love and to nature and just living a life that I'm actually truly proud of. I think living intentionally for me stemmed from just wanting to do exactly what my heart wanted that that day, like in my life, like I just didn't want to compromise that. I just couldn't imagine doing the same thing every day. I think that's what it was. Like I've never worked that way. I've chosen every day how I want my life to be. Instead of going where society tells me I should go because of these boxes need to be checked. I've done checking the boxes and it didn't make me fulfilled and I just didn't feel human. So maybe that's what I think an intentional life is, to feel as like r the most raw form of a human being you can feel. But for me that's being surrounded by people that you love, family, friends, relationships, the dogs, and then nature. Intentional living for me would be just scaling it back and focusing back to the basics, really focusing on what really matters. Over the past four years, Jasmine and Crystal's lives have changed profoundly. From traveling in a humble van for many years to the challenges of building a homestead from scratch. They are intentional about the life they want to create, but it all started with one step. It started with trying. I truly think anyone can do what we're doing, and I think that you just have to start. Start somewhere, anywhere. <laughs> I am proud. I'm very proud. I was both. We're just trying. <laughs> it's so easy to get stuck just living on autopilot and living in a certain way because that's what you've always done or are used to. But what we've learned here is what matters is taking that first bite-sized step. It's never going to be immediate and will have its own set of challenges and nuance because all of our life situations are different. And well, that doesn't mean you need to overhaul your life either. For us, we just wanted to start making and creating videos that meant something to us. And we had no idea where to start. And honestly, we've yet to even find our voice in this space. But what we've learned from Jasmine and Crystal more than anyone is just start anywhere just try and lean into the discomfort because it might just lead to a life that you've never ever imagined for yourself Bella! i need it i'm not gonna lie i am really starting to enjoy it here the pace the discomfort and the solitude I just love how quiet it is out here at the cabin. It's really something. After spending some time here, it becomes abundantly clear why Jasmine and Crystal decided to live here and build a home here. It's just a different type of life, and I think that's what they always intended. So I feel more connected to myself and nature by just being constantly surrounded by it. But every single day I'm just, you wake up to the trees or like water and it's just amazing to be honest. It's just, it really brings you back to the basics of how humans used to live. We are constantly asking ourselves, what do we want our life to look like? And we also know that that is going to change over time as we evolve as people and as our needs change. But 
The important part is asking ourselves why. For me, it was realizing that I was sitting in my comfortable discomfort. It was what was familiar to me. Um, it was what was safe for me. But realizing that that's not actually what I want my life to look like. They have been really intentional about deciding what they want their life to look like based on their values and their priorities. And, and I think it's so easy to get stuck on autopilot and living a certain way because that's what you've always done or that's what society tells us we have to do and not really giving a second thought about what you want your life to look like. What I would tell anyone that's watching this is that normally the most things in life that will give you the most pleasure are the scariest and most challenging things. You will feel so fulfilled and empowered. Basically, if there's something you're really scared of, but you know you need to do it, just please do it for yourself. Do it if possible. Bye, Cabino. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and it's the end of our time at the cabin. Buds. Oh, bye, buds. Bye, Goodbye, bye. Magic Man. We love you. Oh, thanks for coming. Look <laughs> at my page. I love spending time with you. How are you feeling? I'm sad it's over, but it's been a really great week, um, and I can't thank them enough. Week's bye. over. Week's over. Bye. <laughs> when we live life on purpose, when we intentionally choose the jobs that we work, where we live, the relationships we have, who we love, and even the food that we put in our body, we are actively participating in the creation of our life instead of life just happening to us. When you begin to live a life of more intention and create more freedom for yourself, you inspire the rest of us to live a life of more freedom also. So what is that small action that can bring you closer to living in alignment with the values that you hold that could shift your life in the direction that you want? We just wanna thank you for spending your time with us. It really means a lot. And we invite you to come along on our journey as we are in the process of converting a Sprinter van to tell stories much like this one, but from the road. And until next time. Be well, guys. <laughs>